Microsoft email where it will pop up a red dialog box like this. How many people run Microsoft Dynamics Spyware on their machines, just out of curiosity? So quite, almost everybody here in the room does. I'm going to show you a demo now, just very quickly, of Microsoft Dynamics Spyware catching, detecting the installation of a program into my startup folder. So here's my startup folder for my account. And what I'm going to do is launch FileMon, where I've set up a filter in FileMon for the piece of malware, this fake malware that I've created called Logon Help. And I made it in log on, uh, gave it a name that intentionally looks legitimate. It's a, a name that a end user might look at and say, well, Logon Help, that sounds like an OS component. So this include filter means that FileMon is only going to show you file system activity that has Logon Help somewhere in the activity. So now I'm going to drag this shortcut to log on help into my startup folder, and in the next 10, sometime in the next 10 seconds after I do that, you're going to see the pop-up come from Microsoft Dynamics Spyware, and you're going to see it scan, do its 10-second scan here in FileMon. At least I hope you will. Here we go. And I don't know why I didn't see the scan. Well, we should have seen some output here in FileMon related to that scan, which alerted Microsoft Dynamics Spyware to the presence of that new shortcut there. Now, at this point, I'm going to say Allow. And if, this, if I'd said Block, of course, it would have deleted that program from that startup folder. So now I've got, let's just say for the sake of this presentation, I've got a piece of malware now installed and running on my machine. So this is where manual steps are going to be required or, or useful to cleaning malware. You should have the skills to be able to look at a system, see if things look normal, see where things might look suspicious, and to dig, dig deeper and try to identify whether or not this thing is actually legitimate or a piece of malware that's infected your machine. And there's several reasons why you should have these skills. One, anti-spyware only addresses known spyware and certain types of spyware behavior patterns. So stuff can slip through and slip past anti-spyware infecting a machine where you're going to have to go clean up after the fact. And a spyware can be attacked directly by spyware. So once one tiny piece of code gets on the machine, if it's running in an admin account, you, all bets are off. It could have totally disabled anti spyware. And a system might not have anti spyware on it at all. So some of the tools I'm going to show you for dealing with investigating your system for malware are from Sys internals. They're all free downloads. One is called SigCheck. One's Auto Runs and one's Process Explorer. Let's start with SigCheck. SigCheck is a tool that deals with code signing. And all, or most actually, Microsoft code is digitally signed. To be digitally signed means to take a hash of that program's executable image, which is a unique fingerprint of that program, digitally sign it with a key using public-private key cryptography with a private key that nobody has access to except to the person signing the code, and then send that signed hash along with the file. Now, somebody on the other end of this, somebody downloading this program, can take the public key, decrypt the hash, and make sure that that hash matches the hash of the image that they're actually going to run. SigCheck is a tool that I wrote to actually scan executable image for signatures. And what I recommend you do is go back to your offices and scan your entire system, or at least your Windows directory, with SigCheck, looking for unsigned executables and investigating them. So what I'm going to do now is a demo of just a scan of my System32 directory using SigCheck. And I'm going to use the dash U, which tells it to look for unsigned images, and the dash E, which tells it to search to look at all executable content regardless of the extension. Because what we're going to see is that malware is going to deliver itself not as malware.exe, but as malware.bmp. And the fact is, the Windows operating system doesn't care what the extension is if you try to execute it. It simply looks to see if it's executable. It looks at the image header inside that file. So SigCheck is scanning the files, looking at the image headers to see if they're actually executable, ignoring the extension when you use the switch. Let's just take a look at the first few things that come out of my System32 directory scan. And you can see that these are, these are third-party, non-Microsoft executables. So first, here's one from ULead. And so these are unsigned. These are ones that I want to make sure were really associated with applications that I've installed on my system. Here's one that's uh, actually from Microsoft. So here's 
one that uh, shows you that not all Microsoft code is digitally signed. Of course, I'd want to make sure, then take other steps to verify that I really got Visual Studio.net on this system, that this is really a piece of legitimate code. The next thing, the next tool I'm going to talk about is not auto runs, but actually MS Config, because most of you in this room have probably used MS Config to go and look at systems to see if there's potential malware configured to automatically start up. Because malware doesn't just want to get on your system, it wants to get on there every time you boot or log in. And the way that it can do that is by configuring itself in one of the many auto starting locations the system provides code developers. MS Config, let's start it up. Now, before I launch MS Config, actually, I'm going to install that logon helper again on the system. This time I'm going to configure it to start up in another location. And then we're going to take a look at MS Config. So let's start run MS Config. By the way, MS Config is some fine Windows 9X technology brought over to Windows XP, brought over from Windows Millennium. So what we've got now are two instances of of logon help running on my machine because I've launched one inst or two instances configured to run on my machine. One in the startup folder, which you saw me drag earlier, and the other one I just imported with a, a script, a registry script. And let's see if we can find those. Um, do I see any of them? Actually, yeah, here's here's one. Shortcut to logon help. So there's one of them. Now the other one. I don't see anywhere in this list. And there's another problem with, with what this is telling me about that one that it did find. First of all, it tells me where it is. It tells me where it's configured to start up. But it tells me only the name of the image. It stops a little bit short of me really, really being able to go in deep and see really what is this thing called log on help. So that's why I wrote auto runs, to be able to go in deeper and give you more information so you can make an intelligent decision about what some piece of code configured to start up on your machine is. Auto run also shows you a number of other locations, a number of other auto starting configuration settings that MS Config is not aware of. For instance, it shows you all auto start services. It shows you scheduled tasks. It shows you Explorer IE items, including toolbars, browser helper objects, and shell extensions. And let's go ahead and take a look at auto runs, and I'll explain some of the other features as we go along while we hunt down log on help. So this is long auto run started with its default configuration. And if we go to the view menu, I've configured it to just scan the basic startups, which is the default. And those basic startups are a small superset of what MS config scans. In the options, the default option here is verified code signatures, which means that when it looks at the publisher of an image, it's going to try to check to see if it's digitally signed. And if it is, it'll tell you who signed the image. So you can see that, for instance, userinit.exe is configured to start up by here in the userinit registry key. This is a key that is this is going to be the first program executed as part of a logon session. And you can see that it's from Microsoft. It's been signed by the Microsoft Windows publisher. If we scroll down a little bit, we're going to come across two instances of my Windows NT logon helper application. So I've even given it a misleading name, one that's to, to confuse the end user into thinking that this is really a piece of legitimate software. So it's got an icon that's an icon just exactly like another core Windows component called WinLogon. It's got a name that looks like Windows Logon subscription, Windows NT Logon Helper application. And I say it's from Microsoft Corporation. But there's something suspicious here that should be investigated. Like I said, most Microsoft's code is signed. This, these two pieces of code are not signed. And that's why we see that not verified message there. You can see down at the bottom some other information to tell you the timestamp and the date and so on, information about this file. And there's other information that you can get about this. You can delete this. You can copy it. You can jump to the position place where this thing is configured to start. So AutoRuns helps you figure out a little bit more, get a little bit more of a nail on what's going on there. So if I identify these two things here, as malware, I would simply delete them. The other aspect, though, of malware is investigating what's actually running on your machine. Because these auto start programs 
once they launch start up, they might actually launch other things and then exit. So just because they're configured to auto start doesn't mean you're going to see them running. And so you should be able to